This one has officially gone final in the deciding game for the ALDS. The Guardians win it 7-3, and that was the play of the game. Bottom five, Lane Thomas with a grand slam for Cleveland. They take the lead here and keep it. Shout out to Knoxville native, my hometown, Lane Thomas. Let's go to the final out. And there it is. The Guardians will win game five. They are moving on to the ALCS to face the Yankees. You seem pretty excited about that win. In the next round, you see the banner come across the screen. They got a date with the Yankees, and they are headed to the ALCS for the first time since 2016. The ace, Tarek Skubal, giving up a grand slam. Nobody saw that coming. But that's, of course, October baseball for you. Guardians moving on. As we continue to react to this game, let's bring in David Sampson to uh, give us a full look at what we saw in this one. We were talking a little bit before about just how many things were unexpected in this game. David, where does your mind go first when you talk about the surprises that we just saw play out? The reason why you don't want to go to a fifth and deciding game, even when you have your ace going, is because baseball. Any pitch can happen and any result can happen. And it looked like Scubal was rolling along. He got himself out of a jam or two. You you expected the Tigers to push a run across after threatening in the first few innings. And then Lane Thomas comes up and he hits a grand slam. That's the problem with putting traffic on the bases. So for me, the Tigers lost with their best, and that's why he stayed in the game and even stayed in the game in the inning after giving up the grand slam. But at the end of the day, you're going to give up seven runs in the playoffs. You're going to lose, especially to a team with the best bullpen in all of baseball. Yeah, when we spoke before this game, you said you do ab absolutely do not want to face a scooble here in the postseason. Did anything look off about what he was throwing today? No, it's interesting you say that because you'd think that there's a correlation between runs given up or a grand slam that he hadn't given up or a run that he hadn't given up in 28 innings. It felt like it had been a year since Google had given up anything. And his secondary, the spin, fastball command, perfect. And it just happens where if you just have competitive at-bats, things can happen. So to me, the little things, Steven Vogt, when he puts his bullpen in in the third inning, he's hoping that he gets enough run support that it's not a nail biter in the seventh, eighth, ninth. And it turns out that they got an insurance run. Class A, their closer, gets six outs. All of the buttons that Vogt pushed as the Guardians manager worked. And frankly, all the buttons that A.J. Hinch pushed worked, except there was one grand slam. That is the difference in this one. The Guardians moving on here with a seven-game series standing between them and a World Series appearance. What makes this Guardians team so feisty? How do they get to this point? Well, let's talk about the top of the lineup. I think it's three straight games, Juan, giving you three hits. And when you have a table setter like that, remember he missed about 11 games toward the end of the season. He had a little back issue but he comes back and when he's on base which is what we talked about before the game you need people on base for Ramirez and don't forget the way Lane Thomas in the cleanup spot hits a grand slam that's because they don't want to face Ramirez so then you need someone to beat you if it's not going to be Ramirez who can beat you by himself but in order for all of that to matter you need Quan and Fry at the top of the lineup to do what they're doing and so you match that with the bullpen they have, and that becomes a really difficult team to beat, and we certainly saw it in one game today. But the thing is, over a seven-game series where they're headed now against the New York Yankees for the right to represent the American League in the World Series, it's really hard to lean on your bullpen the way Vote leaned on it today. You can't act this way in a normal game three of a seven-game series because you will fry your bullpen. We'll talk more about that series in just a bit. But first, let's tie a bow on the Tigers. I know Detroit fans not feeling good in this exact moment. But overall, how should they be feeling about this season? 
Boy, I hope they're doing the Snoopy dance, and it hurts because you lose and you think that you've got a chance to keep this going. Think about where they came from. They were double digits under 500, and they came all the way back, one of the best teams in baseball for the past couple months. And by the way, they're young, really young, and they've got the best pitcher in baseball. And when you put that together, when you get really good at an ace, and then you've got pre-arbitration eligible players complementing an entire team and an entire system. They're not at the end of a competitive window. They're at the very beginning of a competitive window. And look what they did. They came one win away from making it all the way to the LCS in a year when no one thought they would be competitive. And so if you're a Tigers fan or a baseball fan, you've got to be excited that this franchise is doing what it's doing. And they've got to be looked at as a fan favorite along with Cleveland obviously free agency we're way ahead of ourselves but boy oh boy they've got to be looked at as a real contender next year I'm sure they'll feel that way in due time but now we look ahead to this next series Guardians and Yankees what what are your early thoughts on this one well, let's start with the Yankees because they've had a few days off. They're going to set their rotation up exactly as they wanted. And you had Aaron Judge playing. Can I say this? Is it heresy to say he was mediocre in the postseason series where they just prevailed over the Royals 3-1? to one? What about Giancarlo Stanton, a postseason behemoth? So if you look and they can get production out of Judge and Stanton stays hot, you're looking at an offense that really is hard to beat. But that's not the story of the Yankees. The story of the Yankees is their bullpen. They went through a full series. Hold on, I'm going to hold up the number of fingers corresponding to the number of runs that the bullpen gave up against the Royals. Can you see? Zero. I hope I got that stat right, Tully. I think it's zero. That's how good their bullpen's been. And if they can do that, then they are going to be really, really hard to beat over a seven-game series. All right, we're going to do our best to pitch this game for Major League Baseball. And the storyline that I look at initially is the difference in the money between these two teams. The payroll difference is quite a bit. You know, I'm not going to do quick math here, but I can tell that there is a difference between 50.8 million for Cleveland and 260.2 million for the Yankees. It is the largest active payroll disparity <laughs> in a Major League Baseball postseason <laughs> series ever. I hear you laughing back there. Uh, how much is that a part of this series and a storyline as we watch this game go down? It's funny. As president of a, of a low payroll team for about 18 years, I can tell you that when players walk into that clubhouse in the postseason, they're not thinking about active payroll. They're not thinking about how big the payroll is of the team they're facing. If you're the Guardians, you're walking into this series and saying, you know what, Aaron and G, just try it. Just try to get a hit off our bullpen. And then you're looking at the Yankees if you're the Guardians and you're saying, hey, bullpen, keep trying to throw zero because we're going to give you professional at-bats. But you're right. This is going to be a storyline because the Guardians are looked at as these huge underdogs because of the payroll disparity. But if you actually look 1 to 26, I don't think anyone would take the Yankees' bullpen over the Guardians' bullpen except for the last four games. But overall, I don't think you would. Top of the lineup, you would take Quan over Torres, and I could go all day. So the disparity is not what you think, but I agree with you that that is the first place people go is, wow, that's a over $200 million difference in active payroll. Yeah, it doesn't matter when ultimately the game is being played and the guys don't look at that so much. Uh, but this game does have to be played. Looking ahead to game one of this series, what do you like in this early matchup? So the question is, how quickly can the Guardians rebound? And they're not getting the extra rest that the Yankees are getting for the bullpen. And we saw what the Guardians had to do today. They used eight pitchers, their starter only going two innings. And they have off tomorrow, and they get going immediately on Monday. The good news is that this time of year, everybody's arms are tired. So I don't expect there to be fatigue. And I can go back to 2003. It took us seven games to get 
to the World Series and we went into Yankee Stadium and we won game one by playing the type of baseball that we'd been playing all the way up to that moment. And I would expect the Guardians to do the same. So I expect a competitive series. Don't sleep on the Guardians. They won over 90 games. I just thought that Scooble today would be able to get it done and crazy things happen because it was a deciding game. Okay, you said this is going to be a competitive series. I'm going to ask you here right now. We just have this one go final. Who do you think is representing the AL in the World Series? You're asking me to make my pick I right am. now. I'm before sorry, it's not seeing me. the it's rotation. The in my ear, they're making you. They're making me. Ask you. you know, don't tell me. Tully I love him. <laughs> so I need to see how the rotations are going to line up, okay. and that's my way of filibustering. But I'm going to give you a pick. MLB really wants Yankees and Dodgers. They want to see Otani take the next step. They want to see the Yankees in there, and I believe that you got to give the people what they want. I would expect the Yankees to win their first pennant since 2009. All right, there you have it, David Sampson. Thank you so much for reacting to this Game 5 and looking ahead to the ALCS between the Guardians and the Yankees. The odds makers agree with you here. Uh, the Yankees are the second favorite to win the World Series. Of course, the Dodgers still ahead at plus 155. Given the Guardians just no chance to win this thing, but as David just told us, they have won a lot of games this year, and they can continue to win here as their path in the postseason rolls on.